yeah, it's just such a relief to just to allow everything to be as it is just to relax everything to relax the the constant focus on all of the descriptions all of the data streams all of the thoughts emotions and sensations just just to relax completely and allow them to be exactly as they are and um, I see for myself that when I do that what what opens up is a uh, is an openness of intelligence, uh, a, a clear seeing, uh, a compatibility with everything and everyone. And it really is just as simple as these short moments of, of, of complete relaxation and of testing that out and of seeing how that is for you. And what I see when I allow everything to be as it is, when I allow data just to flow on by, is that my understanding of the context of everything that I'm thinking, feeling and sensing it is just completely wide open and broad. The context is what will be of most benefit to all. And that is seen in the first short moment, the first time that I just relax and allow myself to be as I am, with all of my crazy out of control thoughts, with all of my surging emotions, with all of the funny sensations in my body, just, just allow them to do whatever they're doing. And there's an immediate sense of, of relief there. There's an immediate sense of relaxation. And so I see, first of all, there that the innate nature of my intelligence, of my being, is beneficial. When I just allow myself to be as I am, that beneficial potency is recognized. And um, the data the descriptions that I've been focusing on and that I've been basing all of my understanding of, of reality, all of my relationships, and um, are just seen much more clearly for what they are, and also the ways in which the focus and emphasis on these data have affected the way that I live my life. And the whole idea of, of compatibility with people was with people, places and things actually, with the whole of life was something that I did base, I, I based everything on, on my thoughts and feelings about people and places and things. And um, that basically led me to be very lonely and not have very many friends <laughs> because I could find reasons why I didn't want to spend time with pretty much anyone. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking, I, I kind of set myself like a, like a level of cool <laughs> and, um, and I kind of tr was tried to work out what that was and people that weren't as cool as I thought I was, <laughs> that, that, that ruled them out from any kind of compatibility. But then the problem was that there were always people that were cooler than me and that was really difficult because I felt really... Um, I'm really challenged by that and really, you know, well, I'm supposed to be cool, but these people are obviously much cooler than me. And, and that was really difficult, so they were ruled out from any kind of compatibility. And so trying to find the people that were on my level of cool was really difficult because then some of them were younger, they're much younger than I was, and that ruled them out <laughs> from compatibility. And then some were much older and that obviously ruled them out too. And then I'd meet people on that level of cool who, who I was really attracted to. And that was just so difficult. Because, you know, when you're really attracted to someone it, it's, and you're focusing in on that data stream of attraction, it's like the, the tongue swells up, you can't look at them, you can't even be in the same space as them. And so that ruled them out for compatibility. Um, <laughs> I don't think any of my family were cool, so I wasn't compatible with them. I wasn't compatible with England. That was obvious. Um, and and I, it, was, it, was, it was really funny when I sort of went through the empowerments just to see how the emphasis on all of these ideas I had about who I was and how that idea of who I was had implications for all of my relationships and, and just to relax those ideas in each short moment was for me was just incredible and um, it's just made everything much easier 
you know, really, really much easier. And I see that all of the ideas I had about everything and everyone and, and myself, it's just this dynamic energy of open intelligence. It's continually changing. So my idea about how cool I was would go up and down. And you know, some days I just thought I was so cool. And other days I just just a complete idiot. And um, so to really get real with everything, to see everything as this bright shine of mind, and it wasn't something that I needed to manage anymore. But that training, that education I'd had in, in trying to manufacture this identity and then uphold it desperately and then de defend it, um, was, was just something that I'd learned. It was, it was all learned ideas from other people and the media and and then telling myself these ideas until they really seemed r real. But, but I saw in each short moment that the actual reality of all of these ideas was that they appeared spontaneously. They, they were like rainbows appearing in the sky. So they were really vivid, really bright and clear, uh, and yet there was not really anything there that I could hold on to. You know, they, they self-release naturally. You know, in the same way that, that mist just evaporates in air in, in, in bright sunlight. There's no effort involved there. And, and that was the same with all of my ideas about anything. And so I slowly began to see that I could just relax with everything. I didn't need to put this constant focus on all of these ideas, on all of these sensations and emotions, and I could just allow them to be as they were. And at the beginning that seemed actually quite scary because I'd, I'd never done it before. How, how do I know it's safe to do that? What's going to happen when I do that? And, and that's one of the beauties of the, the practice of short moments, is that I, I could test for myself what it was like to um, just to relax with really strong at attraction for someone. Just, just to relax with it, rather than you know, running away or getting so caught up in it, or just to relax for an instant. And um, it was okay, it was safe, I could do that. I could relax with my feelings of irritation and anger around people as well. Um, that gave me lots of opportunity to practice. And, um, and what began to shift there was that rather than focusing only on the descriptions, it became more obvious to me that this openness of intelligence that you identify when you just stop thinking for an instant was the basis of all of my thoughts and emotions and sensations too. It didn't just um, disappear as soon as the next thought came. It was the basis of everything that I was thinking, feeling and sensing, including all of my opinions and ideas about everything. And that when I allowed those opinions and ideas just to flow on by, this openness of intelligence just very naturally became more obvious. And when I related to myself and to other people based on this openness of intelligence rather than all of these ideas I had about everything, then the relating was easy going. The relating was, was open hearted. There was a, a kindness and a natural gentleness there that um, was really delightful for me to discover. And it was it was innate, this, this open-hearted relating, this, this openness of mind was actually the way that things really were. It was only because I'd trained myself so hard in focusing on all of these data streams, all of my thoughts, that I, I hadn't noticed that it was there. So the retraining comes about in, in short moments of just relaxing and recognizing the already open nature of your intelligence. And each time I did that, there, there it was. It, it wasn't difficult, it wasn't... Um, there was nothing scary about it. It was like actually coming home. It was like dropping this big sack of bullshit that I'd been carrying around for the whole of my life. Just, just dropping it, letting it go completely and just allowing myself to be as I was. And what I found was that in that I could be the person that I'd always wanted to be. I didn't have to pretend anymore or, or take up some identity and then try, try and convince everyone that that's who I was and it made everything much easier. But I still felt anger and irritation and attraction and um, everything that we feel. 
But what I saw was that as I allowed it to be as it was, the labels that I'd applied to everything and the categories and ways I'd had of understanding it opened out. And everything is actually this fuel of beneficial potency. So everything is this this dynamic energy of open intelligence that is purely beneficial. And that can be not obvious intellectually at first, but to allow yourself to experience everything fully from the vantage of open intelligence will allow you to discover whether that's true or not and to see the power and the benefit within things like um, feeling distress at things you see going on around you and really feeling that fully. I found I became much more sensitive to everything that was going on whilst at the same time discovering the stability that was always the basis of everything that I was feeling. So all of the things and strategies that I'd used to damp down my experience or, or control it or um, manage it, I, I saw they were no longer necessary. So each short moment I was allowing myself to feel things in a way that I hadn't done before. So there can be an intensity of experience that is quite common as open intelligence becomes more obvious. But that goes hand in hand with this increasing stability of knowing that everything is inseparable from open intelligence. That there's nothing that can be found to have an independent nature. So even when the labels that come up are still quite negative or critical, I know I can allow them to be as they are and the energy that I feel in things like feeling the distress for something that's going on is my fuel to take action if action is required. So that transforms everything from us being victims to everything that we're feeling to suddenly empowering ourselves with the potency that's in the data streams, that's in our experience. So it's this fuel for beneficial action. So it's so far from a passive state even though I saw in, in, in many circumstances that my knee-jerk reactions to things like anger or irritation, actually I didn't need to do anything there, I could just relax and it self-released. But at the same time, by allowing everything to be as it is, there's this incredible power to, to take direct action if that's what's required in that circumstance. And also by relaxing, there's the clarity of thinking and of seeing what will actually be the most powerful action that I can take. Now, rather than being so caught up in everything we're thinking and feeling, and I know for myself that often that was a kind of paralysis. You know, there was just so much I was thinking and feeling, particularly in challenging circumstances, that I couldn't really act. It was all just too intense. But I found through training up open intelligence that that stability and that clarity and that openness allows me to respond with a, with a power that I didn't know that I had and it is a power to be of benefit and it's a power to be of benefit to all and so that becomes the basis of relating rather than focusing on my ideas about who I like and who I like more than and who I like less really can just get on with anyone and, and there may well still be some people that you prefer to spend time with than, than others and I, I actually do see that like a preference. I, I prefer to drink tea than coffee. Um, but, but there's no big deal there. It doesn't mean that I can't be around people that drink coffee. I mean that, that's a, a kind of silly example but I see in other ways, you know, with political views and um, maybe strong belief systems about anything that my ideas about what I thought about them meant that I couldn't relate to those kinds of people. And it doesn't mean now that um, I have to agree with what other people think, but there is an openness of relating there. So, and I see that as a global society, if I can't have that openness of relating with everyone, then there's no hope for us. If I can only relate and only be compatible with people that I agree with, then that is the system that we currently have operating in our world and we can see the results of that. So each one of us taking responsibility for recognizing everything that we think and feel as this dynamic energy of open intelligence and then allowing that to be as it is for short moments, utilizing the support to 
empower us to make that choice in each moment with whatever we're thinking and feeling is the most incredible contribution that we can make towards bringing, out, bringing about this world that we know we all want to see. You know, we, we know somehow, I've always known that you know, we could live in a world that was incredible, where people got on. You know, as a child, that, that's obvious. I remember as a child discovering like war and, and having no comprehension of why, why, why adults killing each other. What, over an idea, because they believe that and they believe the other one and they're killing each other? What? That doesn't make any sense, Mum. And, and that, that was actually completely correct, it doesn't make any sense. But as we grow up, we learn how to focus on our ideas, our opinions, our beliefs and then there is the conflict. So it has to be each one of us taking responsibility. That's the only way things are going to change, so it might seem like a very small step to take each one of us, but I see I can end the war in my life and until I end the war then, then how can I go and campaign for peace in, in, in the world at large or in society or between countries if I'm still at war with myself and with the people in my life. And in this training I found the tools and the method through short moments and the rest of the, the support mechanism where I can find complete peace with everything that I think and I feel and everything that I sense. Which I, I think is incredible, and that's actually what I was always looking for. 